Find the unknown side and angles of this triangle. Now, don't be confused by this. They change the symbols around on you. Uh, the top the top corner, that angle is a phi, or sometimes people say phi, phi or phi. And the bottom left, that's a theta. Uh, the actual symbols, again, the symbols don't matter. What matters are the relationships. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have x, and because that one's labeled x, it makes sense to call this one y and that one z. Um, there's no necessary relationship between these various things. Um, for the third angle, it doesn't really matter what you call it. Uh, just for fun, I'm just going to call that one alpha anyway. So we have x equals y equals and z equals. Then we have, uh, let's see, alpha, x goes with alpha, y goes with phi, and theta goes with z. All right, so now we have to start solving this equation. Now you'll notice that we have side, angle, side. And so that's the information we have. Whoops, I forgot to label this, 12 and 10. So we have side, angle, side. We have two sides and the angle in between them. And so that lets us set up our uh, law of cosines. x squared is equal to y squared plus z squared minus 2yz cosine of the angle between them, which is alpha. Plug it in, x squared equals 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cosine of 30 degrees. Now we know what, 30 uh, what cosine of 30 degrees is. This is the value that we've seen off our chart. So we're actually going to use the exact value for as long as possible. Uh, 12 squared is uh, 144, 10 squared is 100. 2 times 12 is 24, so minus 240 times cosine of 30 degrees. So cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And at this point, we can go ahead and simplify. Uh, we got 244 minus 120 times the square root of 3. So x is equal to the square root of 244 minus 120 square root of 3. And at this point, now it's appropriate for us to use a calculator to get a decimal approximation. Again, the general rule of thumb is you want to wait as long as possible before using a calculator to avoid rounding error. So 244 minus 120 times the square root of 3, square root of that thing, which is about 6.0, uh, let's just keep two decimals, 6.01. Uh, 6.01. Okay, so now we have two angles to solve for. There are actually different ways we could approach it from this point. Uh, we can continue to use the law of cosines, or we can use the law of sines, because now we have enough information to do that. Uh, when you use the law of sines, you do have to be careful. Uh, the law of sines, when you use this, you will get two angles, because that's what happens when you try to find uh, solve the equation sine of theta equals a number. And so you then have to figure out which angle you want. Now, in this case, you actually do know which angle you want. Uh, there's only going to be one possible combination of angles where the side that is the longest is going to be the opposite the largest angle. So that is the key to look for if you're going to use the law of sines, is that you want the side opposite the largest angle to be the longest side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue using the law of cosines for this just uh, to show you the other method. We have seen this law of sines before, but I just want to point out to you that if the algebra here feels like it's too much or whatever, um, you still have that alternate route. You just have to be careful. Okay, so let's say we want cosine. Let's say we want uh, theta. So the, we can write down the corresponding equation. So we're going to have z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2xy cosine theta. And we can take this thing and we could actually solve for cosine theta. Um, so we have z squared minus x squared minus y squared is equal to negative 2xy cosine theta. So if we divide by negative 2xy, we're going to have to change all these signs around. So x squared plus y squared minus z squared. So I change these to plus signs, change them to minus signs, and then put them in the more common order, divided by 2xy. This gives us something that we can just plug numbers into. And so cosine of theta is equal to uh, x squared, which is going to be 6.01 squared plus y squared, which is 12 squared minus 10 squared over 2 times 6.01, put that in parentheses, 
times y, which is 12. Uh, one thing that happens here is that a lot of students make the mistake when they type this into the calcul their calculators. Depending on your calculator, you may or may not have parentheses. Uh, if you're not careful with how you set this up, you can actually uh, type it in in such a way that this division doesn't apply to the whole fraction, but only the denominator. Now, in order to be safe about this, what I recommend to students is that they calculate the numerator and denominator separately, and then calculate the quotient. And again, the reason for this is just that if you're not careful, you can accidentally do the wrong calculation in the calculator and never even realize it. So 80.1201 divided by 144.24 is equal to 0 0.55546. That rounds off to 5555. And then now we can take the inverse cosine of this. The inverse cosine will give us only one angle. And that's really important here because this is, um, we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case. So 56.26 uh, degrees. So theta is 56.26 degrees. We can go through this whole process again in order to get phi, or we can just use the fact that the sum of the angles adds up to 180 degrees. And so we'll just do it that way instead. And so we have 180 minus 30 minus 56.26 is equal to, so phi is 180 degrees minus 30 degrees minus 56.26 degrees, which is equal to 93.74 degrees. And again, as a quick check, if you use the law of signs, you want to double, you definitely want to check this, but it never hurts to double check. The largest angle corresponds to the longest side. And if that part is true, um, then you have the right configuration. And again, it will only come up if you decide to use the law of signs instead to find the angle in this side angle side case. Um, so anyway, this is one example. We'll do one more of these. Let's look at example eight. Solve for the angle alpha in the triangle shown. Now it's very important here to read the instructions. A lot of students may jump into this one and just try to solve for everything when it's only asking you to solve for alpha. All right, so we have this triangle. We're gonna use the law of cosines. And so again, I'm gonna label the sides. That's A, I'll call that one B and that one C. And so we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. So we can solve for the cosine alpha. I'll, do, I'll work out the details again. a squared minus b squared minus c squared is equal to negative 2bc cosine alpha. And then if we divide both sides by the negative 2bc, we're going to switch the signs on all these guys. So it'll be plus b squared plus c squared minus a squared, all divided by 2bc. And at this point, there's really nothing left to do but just plug in the values. Cosine of alpha is equal to 25 squared plus 18 squared minus 20 squared, all divided by 2 times 25 times 18. All right, so cosine of alpha is equal to plug it in and again I'm going to do I'm going to type, type the numbers in the numerator first 25 squared plus 18 squared minus 20 squared get 549 and then the denominator 2 times 25 times 18 get 900 549 divided by 900 is equal to 0 0.61 now I'm going to go ahead and do this again, and I'm going to do it incorrectly by just sort of typing this into the calculator directly without really paying any attention to the numerator or denominator. 25 squared plus 18 squared minus 20 squared divided by 2 times 25 times 18 equals negative 89,051. Now this number is not the same as this number. And what's going on here is that uh, the calculator is not interpreting the symbols the way you want it to. In fact, what it's doing is because of order of operations, the division part, that all those terms are just being applied to the last one. And in fact, uh, most calculators will actually do this when you do this. Let's pull it back up again. This part right here 
the 20 squared divided by 2 times 25 times 18, most calculators will not interpret all that being in the denominator. And so that's part of why we got such a large number. Uh, students very often, they just blindly plug stuff in and they don't think about it. They get a number that doesn't work here and they say, well, alpha is not defined. Um, it's just a mistake that you have to tr train yourself into not making. Do it, do it, take your time, do it slowly, calculate the numerator, calculate the denominator separately, and then calculate the fraction. Or if your calculator is um, fancy enough, it'll have parentheses and you can use parentheses. So parentheses, 25 squared plus 18 squared minus 20 squared, close parentheses. That way I have the numerator all in one piece divided by open parentheses, two times 25 <coughs> times 18. 0 0.61, which is the same value as we got before. So at this point, we just need to take the inverse cosine. Whoops, 0.61. And we get alpha is equal to 52.41 degrees. And again, that's all this problem is asking you to do. It only asks you to solve for alpha. You don't need to do any work to solve for the other two.